date line today, place Chiselton, and with her fame rapidly spreading, Super Granny Smith is today zooming off on a very important assignment. Morning, Petunia. Thank you, Miss Big. No time for idle chatter now. I'm to be interviewed by the top people's paper. Top people's paper? Not the, the Sunday Chimes. Right. Everyone seems interested in my humble beginnings. <laughs> and my meteoric rise to superstardom. <laughs> superstar, you? You superannuated old skeleton. <laughs> Sunday chimes, eh? Rollicking raspberries. Why doesn't anyone ever want to interview me? I'm far more interesting than that parchment face bag of super bones. You mean those hungover hacks actually pay people to talk to them? Only if they're famous, Uncle. And famous, you ain't. Dribbling drain pipes. Well, I was born a. Eh? <clears throat> yes, well, a good few years ago now. You can say that again. And I was raised in the picturesque village of Glen Whiskey. Almost entirely on porridge, haggis, and Kenneth McKellar records. Why can't I be famous? You've got to do something to be famous, Uncle. And let's face it, boss, you ain't getting very far from being famous as a crook. Oh, come on, please. Such vulgar exhibitions of vanity have badly obtained a young mind, Tom. I need to think. Come on, Andiamo. So the seed was sown this very day, fame being the spur. That's it! I've got it, lads! I've got it! Will this thought lead the Scunner Campbell onto even more exotic exploits? The Scunner Campbell Media Star! Media Star? You? You can't do nothing. I'm just as good as that newsreader, Sir Alistair Hairnet, or Semelina Scott any day. Still can't say it, boss. You? Being as famous as Supergram? Quat! My news has spoke. But what exactly are you going to do to be famous, Uncle? I'm going to be a writer. A writer, Uncle? You? And why not, eh? I mean, they're all at it these days, aren't they? Hollywood hussies, disgraced MPs. But you've never read any books, boss. Not since Smilly Molly Mandy. Bah! You can earn hundreds, if not thousands, at this writing lark, you know? Cool, that'll suit you, boss. There haven't been many famous Scottish writers before, have there? Like, um, uh, Robert Burns? That's one, boss. Well, there haven't been many anyway. Till you, boss. Precisely. <laughs> Come along. Just send the bill to my publishers. Hey, you! Come back here! But while the Scunner Campbell embarked on what he hoped would be a lucrative media career... You sure you know how to write, boss? Of course! Any idiot can write. If you can write a note to the milkman, you can write anything. If the only reason to write in a book is to get me on the telly. Oh. But at that very moment, something else was threatening the very heart of television. Again, lad. Something sinister and uncanny. Dear God, they make mine look little. And yet I'm chuffed for mine. Hundred cubic inches, dear me, they don't look the same. It's length that's beat me, really. They look as big, but uh, it's a length, and they must have length, uh, they have female length. There were lots of lengths, but nothing can have been better than two of them. Yes, somewhere in Chiselton, there lurked someone with a dark and sinister grudge against television. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just don't understand it, Supergram. That's the 30th TV set that's blown up today. I thought everybody everywhere loved TV. Who do you think can be responsible for it? 
For once, it certainly can't be this Gunnar Campbell. <laughs> He's far too busy trying to be a media star himself. <laughs> Gunnar Campbell. A media star. <laughs> You know, work of genius. Is that all you've done so far, Uncle? Well, Noddy gets a train set wasn't written in a day, you know. We writers just have to keep at it. Sold a million yet? No, boss, you haven't even finished one chapter yet. Oh, it's harder than I thought. Well, it takes at least two days to create a masterpiece, boss. But I haven't got two days. I need the money now. And as night passed into day over Chiselton TV. Not more of them, Super Grand. I'm afraid so, Inspector Muggins. It's a wee bit of conundrum and no mistake. I suppose you could always try writing for TV, boss. Television? Oh, no. You're right, though. You're right. I mean, anyone can write better than that, Lord. <laughs> right, come on. Scudder Campbell, eh? Scriptwriter to the stars. Don't have a certain ring about it. Has a Michael Grade been told about this? What do you reckon then, Uncle? Coronation Street? Too northern. East Enders? Too southern. With my sort of background, I think I'm more your sort of Dempsey and hairpiece. <laughs> Police series? Only from the criminal's point of view. He's He's here! Smiles arrived! Eh? Morning, Mr. Cecil. Morning. Which way to the studio's moosh? Pension book for her face. Quite right, too. That's it, then, boss. Given up on this right lock. For me, what with pink shutted jerseys, I should cuckoo. Now, don't you forget out there, you two can win big cash prizes. Did someone mention cash? Yes. Big cash prizes can be yours when you appear on this, your favourite family TV show, where you too could be rags to riches winners like the Milktop family last year. Mr Milktop has now retired from his scrap metal and duffing people up business and he's now soaking up the sunshine on the Costa del Crooks. See you Friday. Sit, that's it. Big cash prizes and it could make me a media star at last. Well, it's a family show, Uncle. And you ain't got a family. Meanwhile...
Is there any lead yet, Supergran, on the person that hates TV? Only one, I'm afraid, Inspector Muggins. According to my friend Petunia Preston, whoever is the perpetrator of these dastardly deeds has a very strange laugh. A laugh, indeed, which sends wee chills up your spine. Hello, good evening and welcome. Oh, it's really nice to see so many friendly faces. And now, who are going to be the lucky contestants on my Clever Dick Cash Show? <laughs> Will it be Frida Fanbelt? Or Big Bert Bush. <laughs> now, tonight's lucky contestant is Olga Volga and the Little Volgas. Come on down. Volga and her lovely children. Tonight will be Mr. Roderick Campbell. It's gonna come away. And his children, Dustin and Tub and Desdemona. You haven't got any children. <laughs> yes. Once again, for the 20th year running, this is your host with the most, Cecil Smarm, hosting yet another Clever Dick of the Year contest. <laughs> welcome, Olga. You really are welcome, and I mean that most sincerely. Now it's Olga, a hard-working housewife of Hounslow, whose hobbies include doing all her own dentistry. <laughs> but a big TV fan too is Olga. Now tell me, Olga, darling, and I mean this most sincerely, what's your favourite programme? It's this one, of course it is. Now, the first question is to Olga. Uh, take your time now, we are all with you. Now, tell me, Olga, sweetheart, who, who, who is the most popular game show host on the telly? Lenny Bennett? No, I'm afraid it isn't, Olga, you silly old sweetie. You incredible old credulous chicken brain. The answer to who is the most popular game show host is me. And I mean that most sincerely. And now, over to you, Campbell children. And your first question is, where are the Andes? Um, well, the... Uh, <coughs> <coughs> On the end of your armies? Wrong, I'm afraid, Desdemona. <laughs> well, then after that barrel of laughs, we come to question three. Who is the most attractive man in the whole of Chiselton? Um, 
Sorry, Olga, you're out of time, darling. The answer is me again. Then came that laugh, that terrible laugh that struck terror in the hearts of everyone present. That's the laugh. It's him. He's the one that's been doing all the terrible things to our television sets. Quiet, you vermin viewer. How dare you interrupt me? Me, the master of syrupy charm. I? Don't you talk to me like that, you braille cream big headed bragger. <laughs> Apron apology for femininity. Oh, yes, oh, me. Oh, yeah. Just wait, oh, Blabber Mouth. Excuse me, pet. Stop and run. Stop and run. Well, you lot shut up. I'm actually winning for once. But unfortunately for Petunia Preston and everyone there this evening, Super Gran is out of town and involved in her new hobby. One hundred and eighty. And now, for fifty thousand pounds and media stardom scanner, your last ten part question. Another one hundred and eighty. Follow that, Eric Bristol. Game on, Super Grant. The man himself. It, maybe you'd like just uh, a wee bit of practice first, Mr. Bristol. Okay. Ready when you are, Mr. Bristol, sir. Stop Stop At last, Super Grand Super Hearing finally picked up Petunia's cries. Sorry, if I don't go now, it may well end a disaster. <laughs> oh, broken biscuits. I forgot. A mile from the Chiselton Television Studios. Have no fear. Inventor Black is here. Oh, Inventor Black. What have you got there? Oh, didn't I tell you? Oh, this is my latest, greatest invention. for instantaneous blast-off. <laughs> we have lift-off! Are you all right, Super Grand? No time to travel slow. To the studios. Here we go. And now, Scanner, for £50,000, name this virtually unrecognisable tune. your answer for fifty thousand pounds i've got it i know it and we're all rooting for you scanner believe me when you get out of here i'm about to win a fortune
Cecil Smarm. Are you responsible for this terrible outrage? Yes, yes. All right, you're right. It was me. And I mean that most sincerely, folks. Never mind you, what about me? It was me. Blew up all those TV sets. <gasps> Tore down all those aerials. And stuck notices all over our town? Yes. <laughs> Will you stop talking to that parrot-faced piranha and talk to me? I mean, how would you like it, Super Grand? Week after week for 20 years, saying the same stupid lines. I just couldn't go on anymore. I just... I just... I just wanted to be more than a TV legend, you see. Oi, smile me, Chops. I'm still in here, you know. I wanted to be a human being again. Oh. Eee, we didn't have any idea, Cecil Pet. Did we, everyone? No! I wanted to settle down, live a normal life. Open a little sweetie shop, perhaps, for the little darling children of Chiselton. Oh. <laughs> A wee sweetie shop, eh? Who would have thought? What about my £50,000? You don't realise what it's like being a megastar, signing all those autographs, eating big free lunches. Mm -hmm. Oh, it must be a hard life, Mr. Smarm. Oh, it is so <laughs> oh, <t> <laughs> oh, oh, you're rotten old rat pack. <laughs> Have you seen what TV's done for some people, Scanner? <laughs> I think you're better off out of it than you. Nothing that she can't do.